Sounds real good. Well, thanks for being here. I appreciate that. A lot of smiling faces. That means a lot to me. So thank you. I work with Mike Gallardi, Bill Wood. So if you guys get a chance, all this information is on our website. We work a little bit differently than a lot of the people you've heard from the SEI so far. We spend most of our time out working with customers. And we work with, I mostly work with DOD as well as DHS. So we're working very big systems. So when you hear the word software, it, it's kind of in the background real quiet. So we've learned really, we learned to, to make sure we found a place for ourselves in the world. And so making sure you have what you need for software, we have to keep pushing to the left. And that's what we're going to talk about here today. So I, I told my boss, I said I wanted to do how and when on architecture-centric stuff. And he's like, oh, man, SCI. We, everything we do is architecture-centric. What are you going to do? Well, I don't know. I knew what I wanted to do, but he asked me that question. So I, I looked at our website. This is the first thing that comes up. This is something that Felix and Jim McHale did, Felix Bachman did, a while back about architecture-centric engineering. It was pretty cool. I thought it was a neat picture. It had real good concepts here. And it, I think the thing that I want to get across to you guys is it seems to be it's a repeating pattern for what I'm going to talk to you about. We talk about business and mission goals. We talk about the architecture. And you talk about whether it's software system, system of systems. This is the same pattern you're going to see from us here. And it's about how things go together, I think, is the big part of it. This part with the TSP was the implementation part. I'm not, I'm, I hope you guys know a little bit about the team software process. But this is how they tied architecture with team, so team software process to come up with a solution for the Mexican stock exchange. But if you looked at the website, there's architecture centric about model-based engineering. It's about acquisition. It's about a number of different things. So I like to talk about stuff on this side. This is the left side. And that's what we're going to do here. So to scope it, just to help you a little bit, is I'm not going to talk just about our methods. Our methods provide a framework for you. I'm going to talk about the pieces, parts of those methods and let you think about how they can apply them. It's important where they fit into your life cycle in your program. So it doesn't matter. We go out and we talk to different people. DOD has something different than DHS. Who's somebody different from a commercial application. So we're trying to come up with processes that are very generic, very easy to get people to understand and to implement. So I'm going to provide you patterns and templates here. So hopefully, you guys, when you go back, you look at these slides, you say, oh, yeah, this was kind of helpful. So let me know if that works for you. If not, I can try again next year. Um, we are going to talk, most of my stuff's DOD. But all this stuff has been tried on non-DOD and commercial. I know a lot of people fear or hear when they see that. It's like, oh, my gosh, that's not the world I live in. This stuff works in any of these situations. So just bear with me and see how that goes. Acquisition is another word that scares a lot of people. And this, in how I'm going to talk about it, it's more about the whole process, the, the, the timeline, and what you need to do to make sure you get to do what you want. And I think that's the biggest thing that we find is a lot of times we get called in after the fact on red teams or where there's a problem. And it's like, nah, that's not the best use of us. If you can help, if you let me come in a little bit early on the left side, we can lay out a timeline. We can show you how things go together. And that's what we're going to talk to you about today. So this is Tim's picture. I'm not very talented, but I do like colors. And you'll see none of the colors match throughout the slide. So it's OK. But there's three levels to me. And it's like, I need to work across all three. System to system, enterprise architecture, I don't care. You, you call it whatever you like there. But it's a lot of things working together that typically weren't meant to work together. The system and then the software side. So you're familiar with the QAW ATAM stuff. Some of the other things that we've done some work on is we've done mission thread workshops. Have you guys heard about that, read that? OK, I, thank you for shaking your head. I really appreciate that. <laughs> System ATAM and system, uh, system architecture evaluation are some that we have worked on a little bit. We have information out there, but you don't get to too many opportunities to do these. So these are all the things. And the, the very top line is the acquisition part. So it, it's great to have an idea of how these things all tie together. But if you don't tie it back to how you're acquiring it or how, what your life cycle is, it doesn't do you a lot of good. So that's how I'm going to tie it all together, I hope. 
So this is one that we first came up with. Um, Mike Lardy did the, the nice picture on this one. And we're trying to think about, OK, from a system to system point of view, what's important to us? Because a lot of times system to systems, and I'm going to give you an example of one program we worked on. But it's a lot of different systems that were developed. Some are legacy. Some are they have an idea. But they're all, a lot of times it's just cobbled together. So you're not going to have one design process. You're not going to have all the good information you need to to do your job, like we keep telling you about here at Saturn. And so we came up with a process of this where we have a mission thread workshop, we have the system to system architecture evaluation, and system ATAM. And so a mission thread workshop, you come in and you use business and mission drivers, except that we put SOS in front. QAW just had you know the, the business stuff. So you're starting to see, hopefully, the pattern there. We have vignettes, mission threads, or system to system architecture plans feed into this workshop. So th these are the things like you hear Simon talk about it, or you heard George talk about it, and a number of people. You got to have that vision. You got to have a context diagram. You got to have some basic path through the system. That's what a mission thread is to me, or a business flow. Depends on what you're talking about. But I want to go end to end across this system, and I want to know how to do it, you know the very easiest way to get through, and then I want to be able to do variations on that. And that allows me to expand upon my architecture and what I'm trying to design. And then it comes out of this, and we, you know, a big part of coming out with these mission threads is to augment them, and this is some of the stuff we're going to talk about. But this was our first vision, and it's like, oh, it makes sense. You know, if, if somebody brought me in early, I'd like to develop some threads. I'd like to use them to evaluate my systems. And then I'm sure I'm going to find a system that's a problem. And that's what we do with the system ATAM is you focus on a problem system. So those are all our good words. I'm sorry I didn't take builds out. So this is one system we worked on. It's pretty cool. So this is all stuff that was cleared. So I don't have many things that I can show you that we actually work on. It's OK to share with everybody. But we worked with um, the Navy was doing the next generation cruiser system. So you might have heard of Aegis. Well, this was to be the big brother of Aegis. And what it is is Alpha and Beta are the, the two ships that we were the cruisers. And we came up with a, a mission thread that dealt with ballistic missile defense. So I'm looking in here, and you're saying, well, where's my system of system? Well, in our case, the ships are the system of systems that we're analyzing. But to understand what I need to do there, I need to get this whole picture here. So this is an OV-1 diagram in a DODE FU. But you think about it as a context diagram. It kind of shows you what's going to go on in, your, in, your, in this thread right here. So it's a very cool picture. We we're real proud of it. But it, there's just a lot going on. But to be able to talk about this, and you know, when you build a ship, there's a lot of different people that you go into that. There's the people that you know, worry about taking the helicopters off, feeding the people, the propulsion system. You know, um, how do I defend against this? This is a ballistic missile. There's a lot of different people. So we had to come up with a way to allow you to talk to all of them without getting bored. And so this is one way to do that, is to have this picture. And then, oh, I'm, well, I always like to emphasize this. I, I, it should be system work breakdown instead of software. It's wishful thinking. The word software in a work breakdown structure, are you guys familiar with that for programs? But it's basically how they categorize the work they're going to do. Well, this for the, the cruiser program, software was down in about seven. So software's not even heard anywhere. So it, it, you know, it disappoints you when you come here and you're thinking, oh, the world's all about software. Well, the world's all about we got to work with these guys to understand their needs and then make sure we can do our software right to support that. So I just think it's kind of neat to see. So this is a real quick example. Hello? working. Uh, maybe my battery's dying on me. I will tap. We will do that. So I'll stand here. So very simple. So when you're at a system to system point of view, you have to think really big. So and we want to get a, a, a number of steps. So in our mission threads, we have a template where we want to get somewhere between 10 15 steps to go across. So that ballistic missile defense thing, we have a scenario that in 15 steps, I can successfully deal with a missile coming into me. And we talk at this type of high level. And so that gives you a little bit of a sense what you get from that. And so 
In our template, I talked to you about a vignette. A vignette is a small story that you talk about, describe your OV1 picture. So it's like two, three paragraphs that said, this is my context, this is what I'm doing to give people an idea. We do nodes and actors. So everything that was on that picture, that satellite, that ship, you know, some missile coming in, I want to get all those nodes and actors down, documented so I understand what that is, what I'm dealing with in my system. And the biggest part is getting assumptions because, you know, just like all our processes, it's, it's stakeholder based. So you have all these different people here and you have to narrow down the field to say, everybody, we're going to get on the same page. These are the assumptions we're working from. If you want to do something different, well, we can talk about that later, but we're going to work our way through this and get a first pass on it. So it's going to be a very good tool for, for you to use. And so, yep, I talked about that. OV1, yep, OV2. OV2 is another. These OV1s, OV2s are DODAF views, but the nodes and actors are one where you kind of show data exchange at the very highest level. The next thing we do is when we're in those workshops, you have those steps that you've got down. Now you talk, you have somebody facilitating, and you have another person typing, and you have the people in the room writing down what does that mean to you for this step. And this is very cool because to me, this is the best part of the job. I learn about these systems based on going through. We try to have maybe five to six of these for these bigger systems just to get everybody on the same page. But you learn so much about the system. And these are the people telling you what's important to them. And we write them down in the augmentation parts. And it's very helpful because a lot of times those things is what, are what we can identify as use cases. So for the DODAF stuff, these are OV6s or uh, the system and service views. But you, you have things, you start to be able to say, this is what I need to do. I can't do it right now. I don't know the answer. But at least I've got a, a spot that I can say, I know I need to do this. We're going to do further analysis on this. And then, oh yeah, our quality attributes. That was the thing that we always start with. But in this case, it's, it's a little bit different because quality attributes, you have to think of them different. It's not just at the software level. It's at the system and the system and systems. Those mean different things to people. And so that's the thing that we go through. Is a, when we do these thread analysis, we ask about quality attributes at the step level, and then we go back and ask about it across the whole mission thread because you get different information. And so these are, it's a very valuable thing. So once I get these threads, this is a product that I can use a lot. And a lot of times, like you say, you can map quality attributes to use cases, and this is how you start justifying why you need to do things with your architecture. So I got that one. So this is flow. So I'm, I'm big on understanding flows and products and things. And that's what I'm trying to get help you guys understand is this is a conceptual flow. Looks a lot like a quality attribute or an ATAM flow. And we'll see that. But it's like, well, what are we trying to work with? And the products we wanted, we wanted to get the driver's capabilities. We want to get the threads of vignettes. You want to understand the quality attributes. And just like I talked about is you will have some sense for an architecture, you know, the plan. You know, what the views are, the OV1 is very nice to have in those things. You may have a sense of the legacy systems. Um, a lot of times in these ones, too, we've had where uh, there would be a huge spreadsheet. This was one in the Navy. And they had like three pages of spreadsheets. They had different systems. And they had different qualities in their systems. It's like, well, I think this is. And this is how they were going to put together their ship. They were check, check, check. This is what it's going to be. And you're like, wow, life would be so easy. But that, that's the thing that you can use is once I understand and once they identify those things, I go through the quality attribute augmentation with the stakeholders. You start getting that information. And now you have you know, a set of these that give you, you know, maybe 70 80% of what the, the Envision system is to be. And to me, this, this is kind of like my requirements. Because a lot of times there's not requirements. There's not a con ops. There's just not a lot of people that all have, are on the same page. And this is what that does to you. And from that, we do analysis. So we have those, those quality attributes. And from those, we can derive architecture issues, engineering issues, capability issues. And we call those challenges. Because at this early stage, I can't tell you it's a risk. But I can tell you it's something you really need to worry about. And that's the big impact for what we do early on in these types of things is to identify and catch potential risk as early as you can to give people the options of doing something that they want or not. Um, another use was, so that one was kind of talking about if I'm coming in early and I can get these threads in line. This is one where we talk about the legacy. 
we kind of flip flopped around. If, if the first picture I showed you had the orange and yellow ones interchanged, and it's like more likely we'll come in and somebody says, you know, I've got this this system a system, and I'm having problems with this one system, and it's hard because a lot of those you don't have that documentation or the understanding. So what we do in that case is we use the same model. Is you come up with some set of mission threads to go through. And then in this case with a, a system ATAM, it's, it's a variation on the ATAM, but you use the, the mission thread to be able to come up with, um, and we'll see it show across the top line, I come up with quality attribute scenarios based on the mission threads and the use cases. So I, I come back and I still have the same things that we've developed with these people. You told me these meet your business and drivers and business goals. I understand your architecture. Now I can develop these quality attribute scenarios to actually probe that system to help you understand what you need to do and uh, you know, try to, to do some evaluation on that. And again, ATAMs, when you do the ATAMs, those are the evaluations you can say, well, these I'm pretty sure are risk. And so these are things that you can feed right into their risk system. So this was some background, and I'll, I'll let you guys read these when you want to look at these. But, you know, the augmentation of those mission threads is something that you just can't stress enough because there's so many questions that you can ask coming out of those. Just listening to the experts talk about their experience and their problems, you can use that when you're looking at that architecture to ask the questions, and that's what gets a lot of bang for your buck here. And this is something that when you talk with other organizations that try to to talk about it at a systems level, the system engineering folks. You know, I've seen too many end by end matrices that show me all the capabilities, and, but they can't tell me what the heck the system does. And this is what these things do for you. So that's what I'm trying to stress with you there. And if you look at these use case scenario, growth scenario, exploratory, just like you would see in a QAW, you just do it at a bigger level. Um, the difference on the, the, the system ATAM is it only has three phases. But again, I think the thing that we find is when you use it with the mission threads, the vignettes, the, the diagram, like the context diagram, you have all the information you need right there to be able to do some analysis work. And that's why this, this method is, is effective. So I think just think about the products, think about the, the world that you're living in and see how that might fit into what you were doing. Now the last one. So the last, the last technique that was on the, the far side was system is system. So th this is one that you know, we don't get to do too often because you don't get these big, huge systems come along too often. The cruiser program, we were just starting to do this, and they canceled it. And it was like the you know, war had changed. It was gotten to be more like Iraq and Afghanistan, so they didn't see the need for big ships out there. But you try to come up with ideas, what does that mean, or how would I do a system is system? And our approach was pretty much you know, along the same lines, is to have a series of mission threads. In the case of the cruiser program, we, had, we did 12 different mission thread workshops. So we had about 65 mission threads that we could use. That gave the architecture teams plenty of uh, you know, things to work on, risks to identify. I mean, the, the, the information was just very helpful to the program. And that's something that it's very hard for us to come in. The SCI compared to a lot of different people that work on the programs is very small. So we're always trying to figure out where do I get my biggest bang for the buck. And this is where we do it for people, something like this, and being able to articulate their risks. Um, so finally get to come down over here. I'll just show you real quickly. The, the QAW is down in the bottom part, so we see some of those things. So again, it's, it's kind of like what we said with the system ATAM is, you know, those mission threads give you placeholders in terms of use cases or different things that are features that are missing or something that you could say, oh, I could do a QAW here. And you use that same process. But now I understand the context so much better. So it's real nice to try to, you know, it, to me it's always, I want to think big picture and then think, how I can reuse my products to be able to pay off for the customer. And so this was a QAW flow. You guys have seen this, no big deal. The ATAM, so you can see I'm pretty handy on PowerPoint too. I stuck that one in there. But this is where the ATAM plays in too. So I think I like to talk about the system of systems, the system stuff, but this is when you finally get down to the software. And this is what you guys normally you hear about here. So I think the thing, yeah, I just let that one go like that. So 
So I, I, I'd like to talk about the acquisition part of it now. So this is um, just a real basic model of something that we see it, we deal a lot with. So when we do with DOD, there's DOD 5000 is their acquisition process. Any of the government ones, they have a large, big programs have something like this. So on the left-hand side, you're looking at trying to do the planning. You, you figure out request for proposals, contract preparation. And then I want to figure out, the, the middle part is, you know, what's, what's that contractor or contractors? What are they supposed to do? And how can I figure that out? The back part is doing the testing. And then across the top, typically the government is there to do management oversight and monitoring. But we're seeing a trend where they're bringing more technical in expertise in-house. So some of that stuff that would, in this picture would be in the green, light green part is moving to the top. So it's just, we're starting to see things change a little bit. We always talk about the pendulum going back and forth in these bigger systems. And it's more like the government wants to pull back and to, to be more educated themselves. So that's what we're seeing on that. I thought I worked that time, sorry. Um, so the bottom part down there, as you see, where you got some of the requirements elaboration, the, that's the part where we talk about the, um, the Mission Thread Workshop or the QAW. Those are the ones that get you your requirements at the different levels. The architecture design is, you know, when you start trying to figure out what process you want to use. But the big thing I want to get out of that is to make sure I have the products to be able to evaluate that architecture. The threads give me that, the, the views, the um, just the different scenarios. Those are the tools I want to use. So I, I would just want you guys to think about we're well, going to have a similar cycle when you guys are doing your life cycle and your programs. Figure out where these products fit in and what, they, what you can do. And make sure you get them in there. That's the biggest thing. Uh, do you guys do mind maps? I like mind maps. I'm sorry. It's too small. I apologize. Orange is my favorite color, though, so I had to end it like that. I like this. But for me, when I'm thinking about an architecture-centric method, I talked to you a little bit about requirements evaluation and how you acquire things. But this is a picture I have in my mind. I know architecture impacts these areas. And so when you think about what you're working in, the different products and things, I come over here. Oh, I can't read too well, so I'm going to stand here. So visually, I want to be able to see what's my vision for an architecture. Those threads give that to you when you do that type of stuff. I want to get a context diagram, just like you've heard here many days. I need to see that picture. I want to draw a circle around what you're doing, what comes in and what goes out. I want to do as is and to be, because that the, the, the roadmap and figure out where you want to go. I need to understand those, because that's all part of my planning process. And these are some of the other ones. You, you, you see the module allocation and stuff. But you know, to me, these are the ones I need to see when I go to talk to someone. If I don't see that, then I know I have a lot of work to do. I come down to specifications. These are the things that we like to hear what they tell us, their business and technical drivers, quality attributes, and then come up with our threads. But we need to see, you need to see these things. And if you don't see these things, it's time to worry. This is what you're going to spend your time getting them to understand. Key performance and concepts of operations. So I think just think about these types of things and what you, you guys are dealing with right now. Um, from the acquisition side, sorry, I'll jump over here now. The RFP, the, the integrated master schedule, system engineering plan, these are different things that you need to put in your hooks. So for me, I want to get in, when do I do mission threads? When do I want to have a, something where I get quality attribute scenarios together? When do I do these things? I like to do the timelines. And then how do I get those things written into these plans? Because it's one thing for me to tell you you need to do that. But if I can get you to put it in your plan, you will do it because you're required to do that. Makes my life easy. I don't have to tell you anymore why. You will do it. And that's the big thing that they've tried to get. Is you need to see that and put your stuff in there. The last part was about process. But the biggest thing, you know, t to me, it's the, is identifying potential risk and getting it into their risk system. And these methods help you do that very well. It gets people to understand a problem. You can articulate it. And we do affinity grouping where we say, you know, this scenario here, here, and here, this is how we come up with this. Am I wrong? 
well, maybe I did interpret it wrong, and they can let me know. But I have proof. And these things have been worked out very good, because a lot of times with government programs, they'll have red teams that come back and say, oh, you missed your schedule, you're over budget. Why? We say, voila, this is why. This is what we've done. This is what our decisions were, and this is why we took our path. Maybe it's not the best, but at the time, this is why we did things. So the, the architecture plays into all these things, and that's why architecture-centric is a good way to go. You guys know that, but you just need to think about it in the acquisition, when you're doing your requirements, and when you're trying to figure out how to evaluate things. So that was, yeah, that's my last slide. So look for Mike and Bill. They both have blogs out on our website about some of the things I've talked about. We've written some papers and things, but we're always, we're, we're kind of left to everybody else at the SAI, you know, they're big on ATAM and QAW and stuff. We're, we try to be a little bit earlier on that stuff. So that was it. If you have any questions or anything, thank you.